uh, welcome everyone. Uh, now, uh, today we are uh, have a new exhibition, Ghana, our culture, our heritage. The photographer, um, Thomas Fay. Photographs speak more than yeah. other ways. So I want to leave my photos to speak to you. In a photo exhibition, normally there are no speeches, like Thomas said, because the pictures speak for themselves. So welcome, Director Chen Jintian, Director Kusi, Director Otiano, uh, to cut the ribbon for this opening ceremony. man who has cut his teeth in what he does, and he does it with a touch of professionalism. These days, cameras are inbuilt devices in several gadgets, and so operated as such. An opportunity for those who find the art a pastime to try out their skills. How many times haven't you seen people taking selfies with their phones, or tourists buried in snapshots of their environment? It is because new gadgets have opened avenues for upstarts who swell the ranks of other photographers with different levels of competence. A man who has carved a niche for himself when it comes to photography by dint of hard work, sheer dexterity and experience. Ghanaian Thomas Finn personifies these qualities to the hilt to be explained in the narrative which ensues. Get ready for one of the longest litanies about a personality or an entity encapsulated in few words because his own is no mean an achievement. First of all, Thomas Fame is beckoned by all political regimes in Ghana. Almost all political administrations in the Fourth Republic from 1992 have engaged him one way or the other when it comes to photography. He has thus accompanied all heads of state to special and chanting global events to take photographs either to showcase unique scenes or speak through photographic essays. Finn reflects through images taken by his lenses, body languages, culture, conflicts, productivity, alliances, nature, the humaneness, and hard work in people. A sage once said, your life is your story, write it well. This is all what Thomas Finn does about people, places, and events with a click of a button on his photographic cameras. Now, take a look at this. On UN Secretary General Kofi Annan's visit to the World Expo 2000, Hanover, Germany, he was official photographer for Ghana's Pavilion. He was at the 2002 ITB Berlin International Tourism Exchange in Germany. He participated in Expo 2005 in Aichi, Japan. He mounted a photo exhibition at the Angtab Secretariat in the UN Headquarters Building in New York in 2007. In 2009, he was invited to participate in the Pan-African Cultural Festival in Algiers, Algeria. In 2010, he was also at the center when it came to photo exhibitions at the Shanghai China Expo. In Ghana, he has either mounted photo exhibitions or was assignment photographer in Accra, Kumase, Kepko, Sunyai, Sekendi Takrade, among others. He has been the official photographer for countless number of national and international events across cities from Accra to Amsterdam, Chicago to Shanghai, and from Berlin to Algiers. Among the institutions which organized the events were Midwest University's Consortium of International Activities, MUSIA, United States Agency for International Development, USAID, Conservation International, CI, Ghana Museums and Monuments Board, Ghana Tourist Board, Pan Affairs Secretariat, Volta River Authority, African Korean Magazine in Germany, Amsterdam Seaports in the Netherlands, Ghana's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Central Regional Coordinating Council of Ghana. Some of the events he has covered include National World Tourism Day Exhibition, National Conference on the Historic Slave Trade, Ghana Investment Forum, Anagua Forum, African Union Summits, the first ever Tourism Congress, Black History Month Photography Exhibition, National Photographic Exhibition, African African American Summit, and the National Film and Arts and Cultural Festival. Looking at the array of assignments on the table for him, 
the easiest interpretation that might be given could be a career that has a silver spoon in its mouth. Some of the tasks have been very challenging, and here are some facts. Donors and organizers who wanted to showcase the storehouse in the Kakum Forest Reserve near Cape Coast in Ghana tasked Thomas Finn to stay in the habitat of wild animals for a month and take pictures of them. Finn extended his stay in the dangerous forest by a month to be able to photograph wild animals to serve as an attraction to tourists. He came away with images of elephants, a leopard, black and white colobus, giant forest hog, monkeys and snakes. Finn did this under some of the dreariest of conditions in the forest. Without potable water nor electricity, his safety was in the hands of God and forest rangers. One day, the rangers took to their heels and left him in the ledge when a big snake was sighted. Today, the Kakum National Park, as the forest has been transformed, have good pictures scattered all over the world, courtesy by Thomas Finn, a par excellent photographer. It was his pictures which were used to convince donors to support the initiative to make Central Region a tourist hub. Thomas Finn has, through his photography company, Finn Exhibits, supported events and given back to society. He is constructing a multi purpose center at Mori in the Central Region of Ghana to nurture the artistic talent of the youth. Thomas Finn covered the official opening of the Kakum National Park in 1995 performed by President Jerry John Rollins. In 2005, he was the only Ghanaian photographer to have been invited to join the CNN Discovery Channel, covering Ghana tourist sites of which President John Ejikum Kufo was involved. In 2010, Finn won the World Masters Award in Arts and Culture at a festival held in Jolanamdo in South Korea. The citation for the award was promotion of Ghana's cultural heritage through photography. In presenting the award to President John Atamels, Finn appealed to companies to support the worthy cause of photographers. He won other awards at the UK Black History Month 2006, World Press Photo 2006, and Expo 2005, Aichi Japan. The man Thomas Finn, a native of Mori in the central region of Ghana, born 1964, who began his career in photography in 1976, with his first photo shoot being the Marie Abanjir Festival in 1981. He got this tribute by the Kenyan director of African Pavilions at the Hanover Expo 2000 in Germany. Maurice Otienu said of him, When I first met Thomas Finn of Ghana, he appeared to be geared for Mission Impossible. When it comes to experience in world expositions, Finn has very few competitors. Anywhere, anytime. Good evening and welcome to Expo 360, the place to be to find out what's going on inside and outside the Expo Park. I'm Kujian. I'm Lisa Jo. And Hojin, do you know that the focus or the topic of Expo 360 tonight is very closely related to our own life, mm -hmm. you and me? All around the city to learn more about blah, blah, blah. And today, we are talking to one of them right now, right here in our studio. I see. It's great. And tonight, we are inviting people who cover events and stories in the Expo Park into our studio to learn more about their lives and work. That's why exactly our idea is true for another photographer journalist from Ghana to mm -hmm. see what his daily life would be like. Check it out. He may look like just another performer here in the Africa Joint Pavilion, but he's really the pavilion's photographer. Music is just another one of Thomas Finn's talents. Now the 2010 World Expo offers him the chance to experience another metropolis, Shanghai. Look, Finn and most of his colleagues live at the Expo Village. He usually gets to his office in the Africa Joint Pavilion around 10 a.m. As a press photographer, he needs a complete set of working cameras and lenses. So before beginning work each day, he makes sure everything is in order. Today his assignment is to take picture of an African fashion show in the pavilion. By 
bright colors, creative designs, beautiful models, and African rhythm. Think that that's all part of its inspiration. And in his spare time, Vincent Van Apart from Ghana really enjoyed his work here in the World Expo. And now we are introducing our friend from Ghana, Thomas Fain. Thank you for coming, Thomas. Yeah. So how long that. do you work every day inside the Expo Park? Oh, inside Expo Park, uh, I, I always be in Expo Park around 8, 8.30. 8 in the morning? 8 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So till when? Till when? In, 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 two in the evening around 10.30. It's very well paid. Uh, I'm not thinking about money now. You don't think about money? Yeah. No, because I need money, but I'm not, I'm not thinking about money now. <laughs> you just like the job? I like my job. The second picture. Oh. Yeah, what is this picture all about? What this is the picture, story behind it? This picture is from Ghana. Mm. From Ghana. And it's the dance company called Ghana Dance Company. That's the national dance company mm. from Ghana. Mm -hmm. So they are dancing and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still doing my shorts. I see. It's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They really captured yeah. the movement yeah. and their passion yes. and their love for this kind of This place. is kind of pictures I love. So two of you, if we're giving you this chance, because we're talking about reporters today, and if this is only one question opportunity, we give this opportunity to you, because mm -hmm. basically your job is about interviewing people and asking people questions. Mm -hmm. what, what will your questions be? Um, what about, what do you pay most attention to? At the as a reporter at the Expo Park. Yeah, me, I pay more attention of, of the people mm -hmm. and the technology. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's true. Mm -hmm. People is very important yeah. because it's always the people that make a place interesting, yeah. right? And then the Expo Park have like so many people every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many. So